Hello everybody, how's it going? Today I want to talk about critical damage, because it's a concept in MechWarrior Online that is not that easy to understand. Unlike in other games, you are not dealing more damage, but you are dealing damage to the inner parts of the mech, and you can eventually destroy them. So listen carefully, and maybe you can learn something new today. And here comes a little disclaimer. So I did a lot of research and gathered all the sources together and maybe I'm missing some details here, but the most important thing is that all the numbers that I'm telling you here, they are a matter of change, so they are only examples. PTI will change them over the time to balance the game, but the basic concept, it should stay the same. So let's get into the video and learn something about critical damage. Alright, but before we begin, let's speak about terminology a bit, because that's very important to get the words right here. I want to speak about components, critical slots and items before we begin. So, a component is a part of your battle mech in which you can store your equipment, like the right arm, the right torso, the head, the left torso, the left arm, of course, the legs and uh, the center torso. So, each component has a number of critical slots in which you can store the equipment. The left torso has 12 critical slots, also the left arm, the right torso and the right arm and the center torso. Now the head and the feet, they only have six critical slots. And an item is everything on the right side. So every equipment, every weapon, every electronics, double heat sinks, ammunition, everything you can stuff into your battle mech, even the engine. But uh, it's a special thing about the engine. I will talk about it in a second. And each item or equipment has a health value. When you hover over it, you can see that it has 10 health for each item. So the missile also has 10 health. Let me quickly go to the ammo uh, and check that okay ammo also 10 health and the equipment double heat sink yeah also 10 health so there are two exceptions however the inner sphere ac20 it has 18 hit points and the gauss rifles both inner sphere and clan has five hit points so keep that in mind that one is destroyed very easily now let me quickly reset the loadout here because i've prepared something for you and now my atlas has some equipment in his critical slots and the first question is what do you need to deal critical damage of course you need to remove the enemy's armor i'm doing it right now with the loadout here but on the battlefield it would be done through raw firepower now every weapon has a chance to deal critical damage every single one there's a base chance for an ac20 an ac10 an ac2 and ac5 for ppcs for lasers for even flamers and machine guns the base chances are 25 percent to deal a critical hit 14% chance to deal two and a 3% chance to deal three critical hits whenever the weapon hits the component that has no armor in it. So there is actually a 42% chance to deal at least one critical hit, which is quite a big number. So let's assume that I'm on the battlefield and my left side torso is open and I'm being hit by a PPC, which deals 10 damage. The 10 damage, of course, they will be subtracted from the hit points of my left torso. And let's also assume that that was a critical hit, one critical hit. Then the following happens. The random number generator will determine a slot where it can apply the damage to. So I have nine critical slots occupied here. So there is a chance of one in three that one of my equipment is hit by the PPC as well. So let's assume it is that slot here. Then my SRM6 will be destroyed because it has 10 health points and the PPC does 10 damage to my equipment here and then it's destroyed. And let's assume that I'm being hit by another shot, which is also critical. So now I have only six eligible slots that can take the critical hit and there's a 50% chance that one of my yeah, precious ones will get it. So let's assume that the SRM6 is also destroyed and the next critical hit will hit definitely 100% the double heat sink. So what happens when I'm receiving three critical hits at the same time? The exact same thing. So the number generator then determines three slots, not the equipment, the slots. It could be all the three down here and then the SRM6 is destroyed. But it also could be that it is one of here, one over there and one over there and all of these three slots get the full damage of the weapon that dealt the critical damage. And that is extremely important even for the AC-20. It may have 18 hit points, but it also takes up 10 slots. So three critical hits with an AC-5 almost bring it down. So keep that in mind. Um, 
a very interesting thing you can do is crit padding. You can totally work around it. So the more stuff you have in your mech that is expandable, the better it is. So let me show it to you by resetting the mech. And then I put a double heatsink into that unoccupied space. Now I have a 25% chance that one of my equipment is hit when I'm receiving one critical hit. And my precious one, the SRM6s, they are a bit more protected now. Protecting the AC20 is a bit more difficult. I could put a Beagle Active Probe into it, but I don't think that's a good idea because it takes up too much weight. However, these slots here, they don't take up any weight and they are immune to critical damage. So you have automatic padding in the arm and your medium lasers are a bit protected through these slots. And we've also got some of these in the head, in the other arm, of course in the center torso and in the legs. What's also very interesting is that the engine is also immune to critical damage. It can be targeted by the random number generator, so it's also a good idea to store ammo in the center torso and in the feet, of course, because then you are very unlikely that these get critical hits and are exploding. But that's enough of the theory. I guess you get the basic concept. I will show you now some practical examples where we hit some battle max. And in the examples I'm telling you what I am assuming that is happening inside of the mech. So I have no actual way to check, but it's just an example and I hope you, you get it. And the first thing I'm trying to do is destroying the medium lasers in the arms. And as you can see, it is padded by the shoulder, the upper arm actuator, the lower arm actuator, the hand and the standard heatsink. So there's only a 16% chance that I get the medium laser after getting the critical hit. So it's very unlikely that I hit it. I think the arm will be destroyed before that. And as you can see, I'm trying to just guess what's happening inside the mech by giving you some, some highlights on the damage grid. Alright, let's work on the other arm and maybe I can get the medium laser out there. It's really a shame that there is no visual feedback for that, except for the red color in the top. But as you can see, maybe I hit the standard heatsink. It's also a very important thing. You can destroy other equipments apart from weapons. So take that into account when you're going for a crit build. Not only do weapons count. And by the way, if you're going for a crit build, then take weapons that deal 10 damage. Then you have the chance to destroy the equipment right away with one shot. So I'm opening the side trouser now because I want to show you how multiple crits work. As I said before, there is a chance that you can deal three critical hits at the same time. And I assume that I got lucky here because the LRM20 and the SRM6 were destroyed at the same time with a single shot. All right. Let's switch over to the AC20 because I wanted to show you how to deal critical damage to equipment that has more hit points than the weapon has damage. So I assume that my first PPC deals 10 damage to that critical slot in which the AC20 is located and then another 10 damage and so the AC20 is destroyed. So let me give you another example. I'm having an AC5 here and whenever I'm doing a critical hit I deal 5 damage to that equipment. So I have to at least deal 2 times the damage to the equipment to destroy it, as you can see. And there again I got lucky and got 2 crits, one on the LRM20 and one on the SRM6. So let me quickly talk about lasers before we get to the crit seeking guns. So lasers, they work differently. They deal damage over time in certain amount of ticks. So let me take the large laser for example. It has a laser duration of one second and normal lasers do the damage in ticks of 0.1 seconds. So that means that the large laser deals 10 ticks to deliver its full damage of nine. That means that each tick is dealing 0.9 damage. Very easy so far, right? Now, pulse lasers work a bit differently. They have a shorter duration and a longer tick. So the tick here is 0.2 seconds. Let's take the medium pulse laser for example. It has a laser duration of 0.6 and with a tick of 0.2 seconds, it says that it deals three times two damage while you're shooting the medium pulse laser. And why am I speaking about ticks here all the time? Because each tick has its individual critical hit chance. So when you are firing a medium pulse laser, you have three times the chance of dealing one, two or three critical hits individually. However, each critical hit will only deal two damage to the critical slot and therefore the equipment which is sitting in that slot. 
So I guess you can imagine that lasers may be not the best weapons to go for crit seeking. Let's go back to the large laser example. As I said before, you've get 10 chances to do critical damage over the full laser duration. However, it only deals 0.9 damage to the equipment in the components. So if the enemy has stuffed its component with equipment, you will deal a lot of damage to them but you will spread it all over the place and the component will be gone before you actually deal enough damage to the equipment to destroy it. Now let's talk about the so-called crit-seeking weapons, especially the machine gun and the LBX weapons. They not only have a greater chance to deliver critical damage, they also deal more critical damage. Let's talk about the machine gun first. This is a very fast-firing, close-range ballistical weapon, which shots 10 bullets per second, each dealing 0.08 damage. That means it has a DPS of 0.8 damage. However, as in the large laser example, each bullet can deal up to 3 critical hits individually. And it also has an increased chance of doing so. So it has 6% bonus for delivering 1 critical hit, a 3% bonus for delivering 2 and a 1% bonus of delivering 3 critical hits. Also, when you are dealing critical damage, the damage is amplified from 0.08 to 0.8. So there's a 10 times multiplier on it when you're dealing actual critical damage. However, that only applies to the equipment you are hitting, not the component. The component will still receive the 0.08 damage and the equipment gets the increased damage of 0.8. So I'm trying to get the medium laser again and as you can see a single machine gun it doesn't deal that much damage or the damage is spread all over the other padded critical slot like shoulder, upper arm actuator, lower arm actuator, hand actuator and the heat sink. So I'm dealing only very tiny amounts of damage to all these places but a lot and usually you don't want to stare your opponent that long. But usually you don't have just one machine gun, but more of them. So I'm taking here five to show you what this can actually do if you hit with five machine guns at the same time. I am basically throwing a massive amount of critical hit chances at my opponent. And as you can see, the LM20 is already gone. Some hits more and the SRM6 is also down. And what I'm trying to do now is provoking an ammo explosion and I instantly got the ammo exploded here. And on a very quick side note, ammo has only a 10% chance to actually explode when it's destroyed. So I think I got very lucky here. But at the same time, there were three tons of ammo in the side torso. One of them just had to explode. So let's get over to the LBX weapons now. The LBX weapons are shotgun-like weapons that fire a number of pellets defined by the number in the name. And each is dealing one damage. So my LB10X that I'm having here, it fires 10 pellets each dealing one damage. And when I'm referring to damage in my example here, I will only refer to the one damage each pellet deals. The critical hit chance for each pellet is again calculated separately. Also, the weapon has a bonus to the critical hit chance of 14% for dealing one critical hit, 8% for dealing two critical hits, and 3% for dealing three critical hits. That is massive. On top of that, the critical damage is doubled to two. So internal equipment will receive two damage each critical hit and the component will still receive one damage per pallet. So I've already stripped the armor of my dummy Atlas, that guy surely took some beating today, and I'm just spreading the pallets all over the enemy just to see when a weapon system is destroyed. And as you can see, I already got out the AC-20, the LRM and the SRM. Maybe I can work on the medium lasers again, but again I got an ammo explosion here and the mech is completely destroyed. So there's one last thing I want to mention here. Some of you may now be disappointed because critical damage only applies to equipment that is stored in the component. And that is actually only the half truth. So 15% of the critical damage you deal to an equipment will be splashed back to the component. So if you are hitting with an AC-10 and you are dealing a critical hit, one critical hit, then 1.5 damage will be splashed back to the component and you are dealing actually 11.5 damage. That's at least a bit. And if you're going full bonkers on machine guns, then these numbers actually can rack up really fast. If you have seen my Vindicator video, then you probably know what I'm talking about. But anyway, that is my brief guide to critical damage and I hope I got all the numbers right and you learned something today. And if you did, I would really appreciate if you would leave a rating or a comment or subscribe to the channel because I've put a lot of effort into this video getting all the facts down and getting 
getting all the sources together and yeah it was quite a fun and I'm really enjoying helping you out so if you want more MacWarrior online tutorials or gameplay videos then you are coming to the right place here. So everybody have a good time and I hope to see you on the battlefield.